Hello my knitting friends, how are you doing today? So it's always a great pleasure for me to be recording this podcast and to be, you know, talking to you about knitting and yarn dyeing. So this is episode 24 of my inspirations podcast because my objective is to get you inspired to create and make and overall be happy about it. <laughs> So you can find me on uh, approximately everywhere as Tricot is Teach. Um, I have an Etsy shop where I sell my hand dyed yarn and some uh, knitting goodies, some markers and some uh, really lovely knitting goodies by Imabel. I am an Imabel stockist. I believe I'm the first in France, so I'm super proud about it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> The best way to gain, get in touch with me is to first subscribe to the newsletter to make sure you're not missing anything. There is a weekly newsletter uh, that goes uh, hand in hand with the weekly update of the shop, of the Etsy shop. So, and hand in hand with the uh, weekly podcast that I'm recording here. Um, I am aware that in English podcast is more dedicated to uh, something exclusively audio. Uh, but in French, we use podcasts for, you know, almost everything. So that's why I'm, I'm always referring to this little video as a podcast. But I believe that if I want to be exact, it would be a vlog. <laughs> so anyway, just to, you know, tell you I know about that and uh, uh, yeah, it's a vlog or a podcast, video podcast. Anyway, <laughs> small details. Um, what can I say? So yeah, subscribe to the newsletter, please. Uh, there is a little gift for you when you subscribe. It's a free pattern for a lovely shawl called the Jimmy Shawl. Um, also, if you want to get in touch with me, you can just reply to the newsletter. It goes directly in my inbox. And uh, otherwise, I'm pretty active on Instagram. You can always find me there. And uh, regarding the best way to get in touch with me, regarding yarn, it's definitely on Etsy. And Instagram is great, but just to say hello or just to exchange a few words, but uh, not if you have a question or if you need help with, them, with something. For example, for pattern support, the best way is to get in touch with me either via Ravelry or by replying to the newsletter. Um, so you can find the, no the, the notes of the, of the show, of the, of the video podcast <laughs> by clicking on plus just below. Um, I try to be uh, as exhaustive as possible regarding the, the show notes. Um, but do not hesitate to let me know in the comments if you are, if you have a question or if you, well, you, the comments are there for you. So you just, you just pop in and say hello. It will be very nice. Um, <clears throat> I think that's it. Oh, no, 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 no. I wanted also to tell you that I'm super grateful for you for the use of the Tricot Stitch hashtag that you use when you're knitting one of my patterns or knitting with my yarn. Thank you so much. And I'm going to cover very quickly the ongoing uh, events in the um, Ravelry group. So the main event this month is, as usual, you know, every month, we have a uh, ongoing call uh, in the Tricot Stitch group. So basically, if you needed something Tricot Stitch, be it the pattern or yarn or both, if you want a double entry, you can post it on Ravelry and or on Instagram with the hashtag that you can see here. It's Tricot Stitch FO Fanfare. DEC um, 2020 and every month there is something to be won. Uh, I will randomly pick a, um, a winner beginning of January and for this uh, month, for the month of December, the prize is a little kit of three mini skins of my extra thin fingering base. It's in the colorways Ivy Confetti, natural slash undyed, and Fairy. And it's a 
kit to knit a little gnome. Uh, it's the pattern by Sarah Shearer, Never Not Gnoming, and this is the garden gnome. It's the middle one, Natasha. So the pattern is available on Ravelry and I'm gifting this little kit to knit gnomes out of this pattern or any other gnomes pattern by Sarah Shira if you wish. Uh, when you enter the FO um, Fanfare for the month of December. Thank you so much for playing along. <laughs> oh yeah, and if you participate uh, both on Ravelry and on Instagram, you have a double chance to win also. And if you enter a tricot stitch pattern knitted with tricot stitch yarn, both on Ravelry and Instagram, you multiply your chances to win by four. <laughs> Just say. Okay, so let's get into this week's episode. What do you have? We have a HO, not an FO, but a HO. That's not so bad, right? So my HO, <laughs> without any surprise, is the lovely, lovely uh, sock pattern by Elise D'Amour Design. She's a designer from Canada and she designed the most beautiful Christmas socks. So I knitted this sock with my um, kit. One of, one of the kits I uh, offered in the shop this month, it's Chestnut's Rustic on an Open Fire and uh, it's BFL uh, for the main color uh, in the Chinon colorway, which is uh, the name of a delicious French red wine that I love from the region of Loire. And <laughs> the um, contrasting colors are shortbread and ivy confetti um, in, on my extra fine fingering base. And Knitting this sock was such a delight. I mean, I really love the pattern. It's very well written. Um, I just have the tiniest of, uh, you know, um, thing I'm not too happy about is the way that this, you know, the jog in the uh, Latvian bread. I don't know if you have any tips to fix this. I don't know how to, well, I know how to knit a jogless stripe. I know about the helical um, method of knitting, but I don't know how to actually fix this very, you know, it's a very specific, like Latvian bread uh, knit in the round. How do you not have this jog? I don't know. If you have um, any clue, or a link to a tutorial or something, um, I'd, like, I, I'd be very grateful if you could share that. Um, otherwise, I'm completely happy about it. I just made a mistake. Uh, you know, I didn't read the pattern correctly and didn't see that I needed to insert here more stitches for my side. And the result is a gap here in the, um, in the chart, in the, in the fair aisle. Uh, in the stranded uh, section. I will not start again. <laughs> no way I'm going to frog this and start again. I don't mind. It will be on the inside of the, of, of the yeah, it's going to be uh, my left side. Okay, I'm going to have sides. That's it. And I think that because I'm very stubborn, I'm going to knit the same, the other one exactly the same way. And I have this gap just mirroring this one. And so it won't be, you know, it will be a choice, an artistic choice. <laughs> well, it's not so bad, is it? It's not so bad. Totally wearable and super cute. So no, no problem. Okay, so. I'm super proud of that. I need to cast on very soon for the second sock. The second sock syndrome is not far, but because I'm loving this so much, I don't think I will suffer from it. It will not be very severe. Um, the other project on which I made some progress is my second love knot. So it's um, yeah, the Love Knot Sweater by Tinker Knits. And I made some progress on the uh, Sea of Stockinet 
on the body. Uh, the bases are my uh, Merkid fingering and Sarian silk in the Modu colorway, which is exactly the same as Love Note, but in French. <laughs> so I created that colorway especially to knit this Love Knot for me. And it's become a very popular colorway in the shop as well. So I'm really enjoying this knit because the texture... I mean, Merkid is a mix of uh, ext um, superwash merino and um, mohair, but spun the worsted way. There is no really no big halo. It's not very hairy. Um, it's super soft, super dense, very sleek with a lovely shine to it. And I can really show you. I don't know why I'm describing it to you. I can just show you it's here <laughs> so that's the Merkid base and it's really really lovely and it's it's so soft I I'm loving this base and I'm pairing it with my yes my Surrey and silk basically it's like you're knitting plumes feathers <laughs> It's so soft, super soft. So I think I'm, I'm going to try and finish this for Christmas and it will be a Christmas gift uh, from me to me. <laughs> um, so that's it for the knitting. Not much knitting down because I had a lot of pre-orders to dye and to prepare and to ship. So I'm super happy because almost everything is finished and ready to ship. And that's a huge accomplishment because some of the orders, uh, although I was very transparent and uh, told my lovely customers and friends that uh, I was not 100% sure it would ship before Christmas, ship in time for Christmas, it will. <laughs> so that's cool. Super cool. Okay. I don't know if you have a hot beverage with you. I strongly encourage you to, you know, for watching my podcast to settle very comfy, cozy comfy uh, in your favorite spot. Take your knitting and your or your crocheting or whatever you do and grab a hot beverage. <laughs> I do that. I do not knit while I uh, podcast, but uh, if I could, I would. <laughs> I can't. I really can't. I wish I could. But um, I think I would have some difficulties, you know, um, getting really focused. And I need my hands. I have so much things to show you. <laughs> okay, guys. So what's new this week i'm super happy to be able to offer you some kits for the new uh, event by stephen west uh, the heber knit along so it's a pattern that's going to be out on the 26th of december the day after christmas um <clears throat> It's not going to be a mystery knit along because you will have two patterns revealed on the 26th of uh, December. So it's a pattern for which you will need four skeins of fingering wet yarn. And if you're following uh, Stephen and Penelope account, uh, the shop in Amsterdam, the initial kits were lovely. They had this very rustic, you know, uh, woolly rustic look to it. Uh, there were it was some gradients in green lovely shades of green and lovely shade, uh, lovely shades of mauve um, um well burgundy and mauve <clears throat> and uh yeah it was some gradients and they put some other kits in their shop and it, they were not gradients this time but what i took from that <clears throat> Uh, for me, because it's uh, it's something you will uh, most certainly knit during the cold months. Maybe if you are in the north hemisphere, I mean, <laughs> and there are chances you are. If you are in the south 
uh, half of the planet uh, you might want to go for something not so uh, you know wooly to the touch and I got you covered as well but for my friends who are like me experiencing uh, winter right now about to enter winter you might want to have something like you know a little bit rustic a little bit wooly and to me it screams BFL <laughs> BFL so that's what I did I uh, prepared some kits for you a part of it is in BFL and part of it is in on the extra fin fingering sock weight sock base that's completely um, uh, perfect for each and every knitting occasion, knitting or crocheting occasion. So, without further ado, I'm going to show you the kits because blah 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 blah. <laughs> okay, so that's the first one, and yes, it's blue. Okay, I'm not a blue person, but I do like blue. I do like blues. Um, it's not my go to color, but I know that for a lot of you it is. So, that's my gift to you. <laughs> I hope you like it. So that's Entre Chien et Loup, a new colorway. That's a very dark navy blue. Then you have Obscuro, the Jean Fetiche, and then another colorway that's called Embrun. On, uh, it's a very light, light blue. So here's your first uh, Eber Nitalon kit. It's on the BFL base, so it's perfect because it's a lovely, uh, a lovely base that's taking the dye uh, like a dream. It's very saturated, very intense. Um, it shines because you know uh, Blue Face Lester is a sheep with very long fiber length, and uh, so when it's spun it's um, very shiny like silk a bit very soft um, yeah so that's the first kit I hope if you want to, okay perfect if you want to you know explore the blues okay the second BFL kit is my personal favorite it's perfect for winter <laughs> and it's not a gradient this time um, it's more an association of beautiful colors going very well together so you have hello sous-bois Hebrides, on first time on BFL, and an exhaustion colorway that means it's completely unique and is not repeatable. And it's Les de Poule, which is the French equivalent of eggnog, I believe. So there you go, my favorite kit amongst all those I prepared for you. And I won't be keeping one for myself because I think I won't be knitting uh, that particular pattern. But I really do love that kit. And I really want to knit something like that during my holidays, something with BFL. So I'm going to put it to the test. I'm going to put it in the shop. And if it's not gone by the end of the week, well, if it's not gone, by the 23rd of December. If it's not gone, if it's still in the shop, it will be a sign that it's for me. And I will take it on vacation. I will uh, put it in a bowl. In I will cake it up. I'll put it in my bag. I will knit it while I'm off. Because, I mean, if it's not gone by December the 21st, oh, December the 23rd, sorry, December the 23rd, which is uh, officially my last day of work, uh, it's a sign. So I'm taking it with me. Because, yeah, the good news is that we're going on a vacation. <laughs> so we are going to rent a little chalet with a 
uh, fireplace and I'm really hoping there's going to be some snow so the plan is I'm just opening a little you know parenthesis in brackets um, the plan is to leave on uh, December the 25th we're going to uh, you know celebrate Christmas Eve uh, just us my husband and the kids uh, at home oh yeah I forgot to tell you that I'm not filming in my usual spot this is my living room because I wanted to you know take advantage of the Christmas decorations so that's why <laughs> sorry digression in the digression okay uh back to the main story so uh 24th here and then morning of the 25th we are going to drive to my parents they are very not far from here it's a one-hour drive so we're going to spend christmas with them and then stay with them a bit i'm going to see my sisters i'm going to see my nephew i'm going to see my uh, nieces my brothers-in-law and i'm so so happy because i've not seen them since september and it's very long because usually we see each other i see my parents every month uh, at least once a month and my my sisters and my family uh, is the same we usually we usually get together at least once a month so due to the sanitary crisis we've delayed that and uh, yeah it's been very long but I mean everybody in the same boat right so it should I'm sure it's the same for you and I'm very lucky in that I am able to spend Christmas with them because I know I've seen that a lot of people are not able to spend Christmas with their loved ones and uh, my heart goes out to you if you're in that position it's very very hard um, so the good news is that on the 27th we are going to uh, hit the road to go to the mountains of Jura it's very close uh, Switzerland actually and yeah we'll we are going to be uh, on vacation for a week. So, <clears throat> what I did yesterday with my husband, we uh, we bought a lot of things secondhand because you know we are not very much into skiing and all that, so we don't have any equipment and we didn't want to spend too much on it. So I bought everything secondhand uh on a website and i found uh really everything we needed in all the good sizes things like that were uh almost never used like new and it was like two euros three euros five euros for a ski uh you know a ski um trousers or uh, like gloves or things like that so uh so the equipment we're good <laughs> and it's if we have snow because it's not uh at this time of year we are not very high in the mountain so it's not a it's not for granted that we're going to have snow but if we do oh my god if we do it's going to be awesome um yeah we will be staying a week we'll be eating lots of cheese <laughs> melted cheese like raclette fondue etc uh, and it's going to be a blast i'm so happy because my husband and i have been working like crazy since we came back from vacation uh he's working non-stop i'm working a lot uh, and when i'm not working i'm still working as a mom <laughs> And yeah, we thought that we really deserved to have a break. And you know, with all the um, all that's going on, we are keeping it up. We are, you know, always uh, putting a smile on our faces, even though sometimes it's quite hard. I mean, I'm the basic introvert. I don't go out very much when I'm at home and there's no COVID outside. I'm the kind of person, I work from home. I don't like to go shopping. I, I'm, I really do not go out that much. And even I felt the need just to go out and have a coffee somewhere <laughs> and just talk to people. So I can just imagine that even I am feeling things like that, which are very unusual for me. I cannot start to imagine how it's like for other people that are more extraverted or so it's very hard so that's 
really something we are looking forward to. I know I will have a lot of work, you know, preparing for everything with our big family because yeah, is there six of us? Uh, but that's what I, yeah, a friend of mine what I was asking how was you know dealing with all that, all the logistics and everything, and I told her, you know. When you have one kid, you like to coordinate things. You like to make sure you have, well, with the linen, for example, with bed linen, you like to have everything, you know, going together, coordinated and everything. And you spend some time on, on things like that. Well, I don't. <laughs> I go straight to the point. I don't mind if it's not coordinated as, as long as the kids have something on the bottom, something uh, up. Socks, shoes, something on their head if it's cold. I mean, if it's like he looks like Harlequin, it's not. No. <laughs> I mean, when when they are old enough, they are taking care of themselves, making sure their looks is okay with them. And uh, but when they're little, whatever is there, <laughs> as long as their primary needs are covered. Please don't judge me. I just don't have the time to make sure everything is matchy matchy. I don't. I really don't. Hmm. Okay, that was a huge digression. But yeah, as long as everything is okay, they're fed, they're clean, they have clean clothes, they're warm, they're loved. I mean, if they don't have a pair of socks that's identical, I don't care. <laughs> and they often go to school with not the same sock because we have a really serious sock situation here. I mean, I don't know what's happening to socks. I really don't. In September, I bought 12 pairs 12 pair of socks for Constant with six. And it's December and I have maybe four, one, well, four single socks out of the 12 pairs. One, four, uh, yeah, four single socks. I have maybe a pair that I'm meeting regularly uh, when I'm doing laundry and that's it I'm starting to uh, consider that we might have a critter around eating socks and targeting only socks and maybe only his socks because I mean uh, his big brother Maxime is doing well he has maybe he has lost maybe out of 12 maybe he has lost like three or four pairs but not much but constant I don't know what became of the 12 pairs of socks I bought in September. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to leave this in the podcast. It's going ways unexplored before. We'll see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Back to the Hibernitalong uh, kids. Okay. Let's be serious. Whoa. <laughs> okay. So the next BFL one, the next and last one is a uh, lovely in my humble opinion <laughs> myself okay so that's very very fall inspired and it's in the browns and copper you have chocolate fudge fury cute foxy and an exhaustion colorway which is very close to not to shortbread actually that's shortbread but uh, I died. This is the exhaustion colorway, and it's very close. Well, it's true that when put to, uh, close to each other in front of the camera, you see the difference. So that that's shortbread, and that's the vanilla fudge colorway. That's an exhaustion, non-repeatable colorway. But to the naked eye, I almost couldn't tell the difference. But it's, it's very something because when I'm looking at them, 
with my naked eyes I can't see the difference but I, when I'm looking at them on the camera screen I can see the difference this one is totally more yellow and this one is more pink anyway I'm going to put a different listing so you have three with the exhaustion colorway okay and one with shortbread I'm liking this one very much it's like so cozy you know knitting by the fire yeah <laughs> we'll see if I have either one of the last two I've shown you still in the shop by the 23rd it's mine okay so that's it for the BFL no we are go I'm going to show you the uh, extra fin sock uh, and I need my notes because I have so many I have so many and uh, those one I have several I'm going to show you one for which I have several kits and after that it's only unique kits none uh, I don't have a uh, more than one okay so that the first 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 one is <clears throat> Yes, it's Gloria, uh, Ivy Confetti, Nutmeg and Shortbread. So this is the first kit. So it's very different. <coughs> you have Gloria, Ivy Confetti, Nutmeg and Shortbread. It's on the Extra Fin Fingering Sock. And the inspiration for this one was uh, last week I uh, presented the kits for the Land of Sweets pattern by Ellen Stewart. And while I was, you know, manipulating yarn and uh, putting the kits together, this color association uh, was, you know, well, those kits, those skins were put one near the other, totally accidentally. And I was like, yeah, wow, that's cute. I definitely would like to, you know, need something with those colors. And in my opinion, this would be if it was a five skin color project this would be just perfect with paired with subwa but it's, it's a four color project so that's one it's near perfect okay so i have several ones for this and then the one i'm going to show you i only have one of each so the first one is rhapsody in blue um nope one so it's for the blue lovers out there so you have entre chien et loup entre chien et loup jean fetish embrun and snow all maybe like this it's a gradient lovely gradient okay um what do we have i have gloria champagne rosé okay that's another one so you have gloria crazy witch but it's a more light crazy witch uh, limoncello which is an exhaustion colorway and champagne rosé like maybe like this forward to sorry okay like this Then I have Soubois Hybride Nutmeg. Okay, so that's Soubois Ivy Confetti Hybride et Nutmeg. So that's another lovely one. If you wish to knit your Hibber Knit Along in beautiful fall shades. Gorgeous. I love this one very much as well. Um, then I have one with some uh, yak. I have uh, this on yak sock, so that's basically a sock base, but with some yak in that in there. And the colorway is um, sorry, okay. The colorway is chinon. So you have chinon, nutmeg, champagne rosé, and silver lining. Mm. 
and two to go more on the um, pastel side so that's the one um, So that's that one is very very soft you have two exhaustion colorways in there so non-repeatable you have petit abricot and dusty lilac here and i paired them with nutmeg and vert de gris and the last kit is um, you have limoncello, the exhaustion. I had two, so I have limoncello. Okay. With fet foraine. It's a lovely pale pink with uh, speckles. With a new colorway that's called Chapeau de Paille on Straw Hat in English and Vert de Gris. So, if I'm showing them to you together, it would be like this. And that's it for the Hyper Knit Along kits. I hope you like them. Uh, they are all in the shop in the in the Etsy shop, so the link is in the sh in the, is in the notes. Uh, you can find them in the Ibernitolong section. I opened the section because I thought that I was, you know, uh, offering a lot of kits almost every week. There is a new kit in the shop, so I thought I might, you know, as well. Uh, help you find the kits you don't have to browse the entire offering you just go to the dedicated section and uh, there you have it it's easier for you i think okay so uh the next thing i wanted to share with you is the restock on imable because uh almost all the imable goodies are back in stock with the exception of uh out of stock uh, I have two or three references out of stock uh, with my supplier that will be restocked only in February or March, even March. So those I don't have in the shop anymore. But, well, those are the uh, shipping sweaters drawstring bag and the shipping sweaters mini uh, tin box. So those are out of stock at the suppliers so you won't find them anymore in my in my shop until next year um, otherwise everything is back in stock so if you've been watching the podcast for the previous episodes you might be familiar with Emma Ball she is an illustrator uh, living in Nottinghamshire in England uh, she's very talented and what's very cool about her is that she uh, takes her illustrations and uh, puts them on goodies for knitters. Not exclusively for knitters, she has a whole range of other illustrations that are not aimed at knitters, but she has uh, a couple of series that are especially designed for knitters and it's so cool because you have uh, very uh, gorgeous goodies for knitting super funny super whimsical I love that series so much so you have the shipping sweaters uh, series and you have the woolly puffins series so both are for knitters and I have both in the shop and uh, usually when I put that in the shop, it's gone in, the, in minutes. So uh, it's going to be my third Imable update. So I have a more precise idea of what you really love. And for those references, I double the quantities. So my objective is that if, even if you're looking this podcast a bit later, I hope that there will be still some in the shop for you. Okay. So everything is back in stock. Uh, 
uh, with the exception of the two products I've just told you about. And I have some new things to show you. So, uh, first of all, for the pins. Well, all the pins are back in stock with two new ones. So you have the woolly puffins here, the three woolly puffins, and your favorite one was the one knitting. I'm not surprised. <laughs> so for this one, for this knitting little guy, I doubled the quantities. Then you have the crocheting one, and it says uh, half yarn will crochet, half hook will crochet. So uh, this is a new one. And this as well, uh, you know, it's the one coordinated with the cost, the coster. So um, yeah, this one are, are new. Uh, so all of them, all of those are in the shop. And you have the shipping sweaters as well. They are all in the shop. And for this one, sorry if it's a bit, I'm moving too much. Sorry about that. Um, your favorite one is this big guy. I mean, I love him as well. Uh, so he's back in the shop. Every 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 pin on these on the, on this little pouch is back in the shop. And this little pouch is by Crea Byzantine. She's a French illustrator, and uh, she makes some very beautiful goodies. She has her own shop in France. Uh, Crea Byzantine. You can see her little. I was gifting, gifted this pouch by friends of mine and uh, it's really, really, I love it. It's really convenient and practical as well as lovely. Okay, so uh, new, new things in the shop. So you might remember, this is not new, this is from the last update. It's the permanent planet, uh, pocket planner, so it's a permanent agenda. It means that it's a weekly double page and you have some room to write down some notes and some things to do. Uh, but it's you that was putting the, the date on top. Okay, it's not dated. So you basically put whatever, whatever day you wish. For example, I put in the uh, 16th of uh, November and then I didn't write anything. Uh, so I will jumped straight to December. Who cares? <laughs> okay, so that's the pocket version and this the desk desktop version. So oh, I'm loving this one so much. This is new this week. It's super big. It's beautiful. I mean, the illustration is gorgeous. And it's exactly the same layout, but uh, horizontally. So you have the notes, the things to do, you can check when you're done and then you have the permanent weekly layout and you need you are the one who is writing the week here. Okay, and it's very beautifully made. I love that it stays open when you open it. And I love that it's really almost a, you know, a decoration object for your for your desk. And if you want to compare the size with the pocket planner, here we go. This is the size. Okay, <clears throat> so that's new in the shop this week. Back in stock are the two little, you know, jotter. So that's for knitters to take notes about your projects. So about foolish, foolish uh, ships in sweaters, sorry, and woolly puffins are back in stock. But I have a new tin box and it's a round one and it's beautiful. I'm sorry, uh, it's not focusing. Okay, okay, so that's new. Although all the other ones are, are back in stock, so the, the rectangular, rectangular tins in the shipping sweaters, the big size, uh, woolly puffins the big size, and woolly puffins the tiny pocket size. Um, the shipping sweaters, the little size, the, the, yes, the pocket size tin, tin box is out of stock at 
Emma Ball. So I have two new custards. The little uh, knitting perfume that you love. And your favorite as well. <laughs> the rum in the red sweater. I have is my favorite as well. I have a new mug, so you might remember I had the woolly puffy mug yes last week. So I have the, the, those. These mugs are back in stock, and I have a new design. So uh, they are not in sweaters, but they are cute little scarves. And it's these little details that I love about Emma Ball. You see. It comes in the in the lovely box with a knitting uh, yeah a knitting decor and on the on the on the lid it's the uh, puffins with the lovely scarves and it's great to gift if you wish that it comes in this lovely box and the last things I wanted to show you so the the top bags are back in stock as well I think the uh, the one with only uh, the uh, the ram with the red sweater is out of stock as well as the knitting puffin. But I have two new ones. The uh, you know the one with all the sheep is back in stock, and I have this one full of woolly goodness, and it's very cute. And I like this little guy. <laughs> Okay, so that's one. And the second one is for all the crocheters out there. And this one reads a ball of yarn and a crochet hook. That's all it takes to make me happy. Okay. <laughs> So that's it for Emma Ball. Everything is in the shop. So um, do not be afraid if uh, you know the uh, shipping is a bit expensive because I'm going to refund anything. Uh, if there is a difference over one euro, I'm going to refund you. So if it's under one euro, I don't uh, do you for a refund because. Uh, I mean it's not a huge difference but if it's over one euro I will you know refund the difference um, and I think that's it for the knitting and the shop the last thing I wanted to share with you this week <clears throat> I I really very quickly talked about it last week you know the Ingle Nook Fiber uh, 12 uh, days of Christmas spin along so I wanted to share a bit more about that with you. Um, so all my little envelopes are here. And I wanted to share with you the theme for this year. It's tidings of comfort and joy. So this is the picture we, went se we were sent. This is the inspiration uh, for the the colors, the 12 colors we are going to discover starting December the 25th. Uh, the composition is 30% bond fleece, merino, polwarth, silk bamboo, silk noi and angelina because I chose the sparkle <laughs> edition. So the little envelopes look like that. And this is to be opened on December the 25th. I'm super happy. So I ordered a complimentary uh, braid to go with uh, the envelope. So I'm going to tell you what it is. So that's also from Ingle Nook Fibers. And this is 100% organic pole wolf and the colorway is sumac. It's a gorgeous burgundy, very deep. It's lovely and it's 
super, super soft. Oh, wow, super soft. So, you know, I have something on my wheel right now. I, I think I'm going to power spin to empty my bobbins, finish my ongoing uh, spinning project, to have the wheel ready for this. And I want to, you know, <clears throat> practice a bit because it's been a while since I last spun. And I want to be sharp for these babies. I've been waiting for them so long. I want to be uh, very sharp and very uh, good at my, I'm my very consistent actually in my spinning. So uh, I'm aiming to, you know, finish my uh, ongoing project and I've already negotiated with my husband that we take my wheel with us to our vacation. So I'm going to, you know, celebrate Christmas with my wheel and then I will take my wheel <laughs> on vacation with us. Uh, because, yeah, for me, I, I think it will be some time of uh, spinning which I have not had the time, despite all my, you know, my intent and my organization. I wanted to spin 15 a day. I wanted to, you know, I tried to spin early in the morning. I, I tried to spin on my lunch break. But uh, over the past few weeks, I just didn't manage to get up early in the morning because the nights have been so broken up with my baby we're still breastfeeding and sometimes waking up like five or six times a night so i didn't really i couldn't physically I, I couldn't wake up early to do some spinning or anything else and i didn't have any barely any lunch break over the past weeks so uh it's been very crazy busy this is super cool, but crazy busy. Uh, physically, it's a bit hard sometimes. I'm very tired in the evening. Uh, but I, I have a baby that, you know, don't sleep much. <laughs> and uh, sometimes she just falls asleep very late in the afternoon. Yesterday was nightmare scenario. She fell asleep. It was like almost six o'clock. <laughs> I was like, no, why? <laughs> she wouldn't go to sleep at all during the whole afternoon. And then, uh, yeah, it was six-ish until like 7.30. I was like, I am so doomed. <laughs> I am so doomed. I am, I am staying polite. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I didn't think that. I think another word, okay? And uh, I think it was, uh, I think she fell asleep. It was <laughs> 20 to 1, yeah? Well past midnight. So the good thing when she sleeps like this, when she falls asleep very, very uh, late in the evening, uh, usually she sleeps better, she, there is less uh, breastfeeding breaks in the night, so uh, she woke up only once and then uh, it was very quick and she fell asleep and she didn't wake up until like 7.30 this morning, so that was, that was, you know, comparatively I think it's a good night, good night sleeps of sleep, uh, but when she falls asleep, like around 10 or something like that, you can make sure, it's sure, it's assured she's going to wake up and want to want to breastfeed uh, at least three, four, six times. So, yeah, so yeah, but I mean, it's been like this since uh, her birth. Her uh, brother and sisters didn't have the same uh, I didn't breastfeed them, uh, breastfeed them so long because I did for her because she's allergic to milk. So, and everything that's you know uh, vegetal milk, it's not uh, it's not good enough to. There is not. A, oh, sorry, I'm searching for the words. Uh, there are not enough nutrients in there for her. So I decided to keep on breastfeeding her <laughs> and it's been, it's been really fantastic and I'm not regretting anything and it's 
we have such a lovely bond and uh, and really it's it's great it's not been easy but it's great and i'm so happy i'm still doing it uh and uh <clears throat> Everything is okay. It mean I mean it's just the nights, really the nights. I mean, at the same age, uh, brother and sisters were sleeping through the nights without any problems, and we were able to put them to bed at like eight or nine o'clock at night, and it was not not an issue, and they slept the whole night through. Uh, but for Amelia, uh, she goes to bed when I go to bed, otherwise. And sometimes I have to wait for her to go to bed to go to bed myself, and she wakes up a lot. So yeah, I'm not very free to dispose of my evenings and my mornings as I wish. And it's true that it's a bit difficult to squeeze in some time to spin or to do some cross stitch or even to do some knitting sometimes. And uh, thank God she's in daycare and I have at least four days a week in which I can, you know, work. <laughs> Otherwise it would be so difficult. Uh, anyway, it's a very chatty episode this week. <laughs> I hope you don't mind. Um, but I think it's going to be all for this week. Um, I wish you a lovely week. Uh, I will see you again, I hope, last week. Uh, next week. <laughs> next week for the last episode of the year yes i will be on the 21st of december so that's our last rendezvous of the year and then i will be off for my vacations and i'll be back on january the 4th for a new year and i hope it will be better than the last okay so take care see you next week and craft and make and knit and crochet a lot bye guys <laughs>